So in this week's episode, we continue to shine a light on mental health issues, and in particular, issues such as anxiety and depression. And we begin to look at an emerging medicine here in Scotland, a traditional Amazonian medicine, which more and more people are coming to in order to find relief from the symptoms of anxiety, depression, and other mental and physical ailments that they have. So, Campbell is a really interesting medicine, and it's not very well known in Scotland. There are only a handful of practitioners in the country. It's a medicine that both myself and Alan have used over the past couple of years to bring about a physical cleanse, but also uh, an emotional release and help you release some blockages that have been holding you back in life. Now, a couple of our friends, Susan McGrory and Karen O'Donnell, they're actually girls that we went to high school with and we've been pals with them for over 20 years. They got in touch with us recently because they'd been going through a bit of a hard time over the lockdown period with anxiety. It had really flared up and they were struggling a bit with anxiety and they were looking at different means to deal with that aside from pharmaceuticals and all the other different methods in the mainstream that just don't really do much good in the long term. And in this episode... Karen, Susan and another lady have came forward, a lady by the name of Michelle Jones, have all come forward to take part in a Campbell ceremony and also then to tell us about the amazing progress they've made using this medicine. Your evolution is all about health, well-being and self-growth and development. So if you're enjoying that type of content, then please hit the subscribe button below this video and enjoy the episode. Karen and Susan are close pals, and both have tried numerous ways to deal with anxiety and improve their mental health. The Amazonian frog medicine Cambo has cropped up a few times in our interviews over the last few months. It's one of the most powerful uh, cleansing uh, medicines that we have available to us. I was really amazed at the effect it had on my mental health. Um, You know, I mean, it almost obliterated my anxiety in one session. And both Karen and Susan have felt drawn towards Campbell. Much respect to both of them because experiencing Campbell is not an easy process. And here Karen and Susan open up about their struggles and where they are now. I believe everything happens for a reason Um, and I didn't know about Campbell up until Mark and Alan had um, posted about it on their on their channel. Um, I have suffered from anxiety since I was eighteen. I had a massive breakdown when I was eighteen. Didn't know why. I didn't know what was going on. If I'm being honest, I actually thought guys were going to come from a straight jacket because back then it was twenty years ago, and like social media wasn't there. I had mental health awareness wasn't there, so I was just sitting going, "What's wrong? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with me? I couldn't understand it." Didn't know what to tell anybody because I was like, I sound like a crazy person. And then that was when I first got put on hundreds of tablets, antidepressants, and diazepam, and everything. My dad was going crazy. He's like, Why should you been putting on the tablets? And then that basically was the cycle of me being on and off and anxiety medication, antidepressants, and it was just a cycle that I was on. I've tried all the antidepressants that you could possibly think of from Citalopram, Prozac, Sertraline. I've tried CBT three times. I've tried my I've had a mindfulness course. I've done sacrocranial therapy. I've seen a psychologist, psychiatrist, and I've done EMDR. But it's basically to reprocess your, your trauma. Um, I've done that. So, and I've seen, I do feel as if I'm getting there, but I feel as if I'm not there's something missing and I'm just this landed on my lap yeah. so I'm kind of hoping that this is the there's something missing for, for myself I've never really um, suffered from anxiety in the past when my first experience of it came just the weekend before uh, lockdown um, and I remember I was in my mum's estate and we degraded at the town and then just stayed overnight at our house because I couldn't drive um, and all of a sudden I just started to get this really, really weird sensation, I had no clue, I thought it was actually taking a stroke, so I was trying to do all the arm movements, make sure I was okay, 
And then obviously that was my very first experience of taking a mm. panic attack. And I suppose probably because I have been through things that maybe I don't register that I've actually been through um, issues that it's all now kind of manifested and pressure for work. It's just kind of tipped me basically over over the edge. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, obviously I've yourself, Martin Allen, who've been talking about plant medicine, um, other friends, Vicky's Dale, so I've kind of heard about it. Wasn't really, um, not interested, but never really kind of considered it at mm-hmm. first. But when obviously then I started taking anxiety, heart palpitations, getting physical symptoms of anxiety, because I wouldn't necessarily say I suffer thoughts no. But as kind of said in the past yourself, Karen, I've got a very bad habit of just blowing stuff out. I just thought that like after today you do it, you feel it. I don't really know what I'll feel after it either, which I think is quite a good thing. I think that's what I'm more excited about. To, uh, to see what it's, what it's like at the other side. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm hoping that, well, for me, the physical symptoms of my anxiety goes, that's, that's what calmer, I'm calmer, I want to be calmer. Um, yeah. Be a uh, calm, calm mind. I just hope that like, that the anxiety goes and I just feel a bit more clearer because mm-hmm. my I feel as if my brain is like so you've got the train station and remember you used to see the 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 route of the trains and all that like all the different mm-hmm. that I feel as if there's not one thought that goes through my mind at one time there's like a million mm-hmm. and I just hope that I get a bit more clearer and a bit more clarity. Myself and Alan have used Cambo numerous times over the past couple of years to help heal the body. It essentially involves using small dots of poison from the giant monkey tree frog in the Amazon under the skin. This then triggers a really powerful energy release, removal of toxins from the body and it has been shown to be really effective in treating a variety of illnesses including anxiety. So, we connected Karen and Susan with Stephen Creeley. He's one of the most experienced Campbell practitioners in the country. And since qualifying over three years ago, Stephen has led hundreds of Campbell ceremonies to help people to heal themselves from a wide variety of ailments. So I think, like anybody else who's sitting watching this, it's like Campbell was not a thing that I've ever heard of before. I found like my one particular experience just before it actually was that I had been to Peru on January 2016, remember, I went there for a month and I got to spend some time with the people over there at the same time and I just felt it was like that experience, I mean, of what we kind of call plant medicines actually come from and the best way to maybe have an understanding of them was to go along and spend some time with the people, remember, not so much for the ayahuasca but just to see the culture, remember, from the stories that we read online. And as I said, when I came back, I think it was on the April, so this is what, just three months later, I was having a wee look through Facebook, the uh, Facebook page called Ayahuasca Scotland page, and somebody had put an advert on saying that they were going to do um, a Campbell ceremony. They were going to do one at the weekend. One was on uh, Saturday, it was in Edinburgh, and one was in Glasgow. I mean, so I was thinking, for me, my interest, I mean, in these kind of cultures and how they look after the health of themselves and the people around about them. So when he came along, I phoned up, tried to get an appointment on Edinburgh on Saturday. He said it was fully booked. Um, I said to him, could I come along on the one on the Sunday in Glasgow? He said, that's fine. Um, I got a kind of message from him on uh, Saturday evening, said that he didn't have any premises for the Glasgow one. So I asked round about one or two friends, but they said they might have them. But I said to me, was more welcome to come here. I mean, so, in this house here just now. So, April 2017, like everybody else, I never knew anything about that. I just accepted this is coming my way. Yeah. Right? Um, I sat down there, I think there was something like five of us. Mm-hmm. At that point, it was a, a practitioner who's associated with the group of people who run the web page called the IAKP, which stands for the International Association of Campbell Practitioners, .org. And he came up from Brighton, at that point there was nobody in Scotland even knew anything about it. Mm-hmm. I mean, no, there was no practitioners. By the time everybody had left in the early evening, I was on my laptop wanting to know how to become a Campbell practitioner. Mm-hmm. That was almost like the impact that I had at that point. So that was April 2017, so I went from how did I become a Campbell practitioner mm. to where we are just now. 
and my journey was that in October 2017 I was then invited to go along to the train which was held in Poland at that time and it's a kind of two week intensive course and under their kind of training they show they try to bring Cambo or try and share the knowledge actually from the people who still use it just now on uh, in the southern South America along the Peru and uh, Brazilian border. So they're trying to bring it in, they're trying to bring it in through a kind of medical model. Mm. And after the two weeks, it's almost like, it's like being at school. <laughs> they don't tell you if you pass until the last day. So it comes a wee bit kind of relief now all of a sudden. You've got your certificate, it tells you you're a Campbell practitioner, and now you have to come back to Scotland, Glasgow, and nobody knows you're a Campbell practitioner. Because <laughs> nobody's heard of it. Um, from the AKP webpage, I think there's actually five of us now. Remember? And there's people in London also run the course as well. And there's people I know in Perth that also run the same thing as well. So it's went from having nobody in 2016, so now we've maybe got about um, 10, 11 people, remember, who offer people the opportunity to come along and have the experience on Campbell. At the very start, it was really people that I knew, some of my friends, in the same kind of age group, who were into alternative holistic approaches to it. So for that we kind of started swapping treatment. So therefore I gave maybe a bit of experience, I think it was maybe the following January, February it was. Then I kind of advertised that, I mean, for people excited to come along. And from that, I would probably say, I think there's something about 500 people that I've treated within that short period of time. Because people don't really know anything about it, if you go on to a Google search engine and type in the word CAMBO, right, which is spelled K-A-B-O, right, the first seven articles is they're not going to come and take it. Right, so there's a lot of misinformation around about it at the same time. So I see the web page, iakp.org, is where you get some information. So we had the Campbell facilitator, we had the participants, and all we needed next was a space to hold the Campbell ceremony. And we're better than the U Revolution HQ, aka my flat. Stephen was joined by Maya Medvesic, who is training to be a Campbell facilitator and who is actually a friend of U Revolution because we've previously had Maya on the channel talking about her DJ career and working with plant medicines. Stephen explained to Karen and Susan how the Campbell medicine would work and how his ceremony would unfold. After discussing their issues with Karen and Susan and what had gone on in their lives many years before, Stephen began working with acupressure points. He then used another Amazonian medicine called Sananga, and these are like eye drops which can be very uncomfortable for several minutes but help the body clear negative energies. Stephen then makes tiny burns on the skin which correlate with specific meridian points. And the reason for these burn spots is that these are where the frog poison will be placed and by getting under the top layer of the skin this will allow the frog secretions to flow into the body's lymphatic system and do its clean up work. Karen and Susan are then both instructed to drink 2 litres of water within 15 minutes and this is because the frog poison causes the body to pull accumulated toxins into the stomach and then the belly full of water causes you to purge everything up. The whole experience can be mildly to very uncomfortable, causing nausea and symptoms like your body burning up, your face bloating, your heart rate increasing and generally feeling pretty crappy. But this is short lived and the ceremony is generally over in 40 to 50 minutes and also the long term benefits of experiencing that temporary discomfort are why more and more people are gravitating towards Campbell. Um, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia uh, about two years ago. Um, really the, si the signs and the symptoms were all there for about four years before I was actually diagnosed with it. Um, but I hadn't really noticed until two years ago. Um, and the, then the symptoms started becoming like one on top of the other. They weren't even spread out anywhere. Um, to the point where I ended up bed bound um, for most days and um, it was really sore when I was actually getting up out of my bed. It felt like there was lances running about my feet, my hands were tight, um, obviously because I wasn't moving um, so my lymphatic system wasn't 
being able to clear out my body properly either because of the fatigue and how tired I was and sore I was, so the lying about wasn't helping. Um, I would go to the doctors, ask for help, and they would just say to me there was, there was nothing really they could do apart from give me heavy medication that was going to make me even more sleepy, which wasn't, a, it wasn't an option for me because I had two kids um, trying to look after them. And I was like, I was already struggling to get up out of my bed to help feed them and stuff like that. Um, so I was feeling quite guilty about that as well, obviously beating myself up on top of that. And um, they wanted to put me back on antidepressants, so they kept telling me that I was depressed. And I actually, the fact that they had told me there was something wrong with me, and I had knew it had been there for years, had settled me inside. So I knew I wasn't depressed. The fact that I'd had a diagnosis had actually settled me inside. It was more just trying to get through the pain for me. Um, and how bad was the pain? How debilitating was the condition for you? Um, really bad. Like, really, I think people used to think that I was kidding on. Um, I can mind that my body just used to absolutely shut down with the fatigue to the point where you'd probably have thought that I took something to go to sleep. I can mind my dad coming in trying to wake me up. Um, and I, like, I actually physically couldn't waken my body up. My dad had told me that he'd been in one time and woke me up on the couch and I could not remember a thing. I'd had a full conversation with him and couldn't remember nothing. Um, I'd had a shower one day, came out the shower and I had totally, it was like my memory had just wiped itself. I totally forgot that I'd had a shower. Came out the shower and I said to my daughter that I was going back in the shower and she just looked at me and was like, you've just been in. Um, and that was, that was when I realised like there was something really, really wrong that needs to get fixed here. So you were getting nowhere with the, the mainstream medical options. How did you come across Campbell? Tell us how that all unfolded. I'd actually read a wee bit about it probably about three months before I had got in contact with Stephen um, and I was quite intrigued by it and I thought this could probably be what I'm looking for um, but I didn't, think, I didn't know how I would be able to find anybody that had done, done anything like that over here and kinda, I'd read a wee bit and then it just kind of left my mind and I was quite friendly with a woman called Liz and she had mentioned the Campbell to me and I was like, I really want to get that done. And she says to me, oh, I know someday that I can get you in touch with. Um, however, I think it must have been about the same week that I'd spoke to Liz and a ceremony with Stephen had popped up on Facebook and it was on the run up to Christmas. I was in my bed with this fatigue and the way he'd worded it was about getting energy and clearing out and stuff like that and, and time for the Christmas period and I thought I need energy like this so I messaged him and the first time I came uh, obviously you're a bit nervous and stuff like that you don't know what to expect but I was at the stage of, like I just needed anything to help me I was extremely sick physically and spiritually mm -hmm as well because it was just making me at the point where I didn't even want to be here because of how ill I was. Um, but when I came in, Stephen was so welcoming, made me feel so comfortable, spoke me through everything in good depth that I knew what was going to happen to me um, through the ceremony. And obviously after that was going to depend on myself and what was happening inside me and what shifts it was going to make. Campbell was first analysed in a lab in 1986 by Italian scientist Vittorio Erspammer, the man who first discovered serotonin, and he described Campbell as a fantastic chemical cocktail with potential medical applications. And the reason for this is that it contains dozens of peptides which stimulate numerous positive health effects in the body. And scientists are showing a huge interest in Campbell and over 70 patents have since been lodged, mainly in the US. And studies are ongoing and one of Campbell's most exciting potential medical applications is in the treatment of cancer. Its Dermaseptin B2 peptide has been shown to inhibit cancer cell growth by more than 90%. And there are also signs that it could be useful in the development of treatments for Alzheimer's disease, depression and strokes. And some more anecdotal evidence and certainly feedback that Stephen Creeley has had after conducting 
hundreds of cambo ceremonies is that it can be very effective for dealing with anxiety, depression and fibromyalgia. After suffering for years with fibromyalgia, Michelle now tells us all about her Campbell experiences and the huge positive impact the medicine had on her health. Place one dot on me and he told me to have a like a lie down like that kinda of come over me and I did go into like a meditative state and I seen um, a couple of visions. I felt like they were lifting these things off me. Um I didn't expect that. Um but I had got a couple of visions as if like this, it was like total spiritual what had went on because it was as if this energy had came in and just lifted off this dark stuff off of me. But it was showing me it was doing it. And um, that was just with the one dot. And then once that had kind of went on, we, um, we'd done the rest of the dots. And then I purged. Um, and the, you do get a, a wee bit where you're like, why have I done this? But the feeling was just like, I knew there was something coming out of me and I knew there was something big happening and a big shift happening around about me and inside me. Yeah, they, they say that Cambo lifts panema, kind of heavy energies from the body. So are you saying you felt that then, these heavy energies leaving your system? I could, I, my body felt lighter. I felt like after it, my body felt floaty and I could like, Somebody explaining Panama like the dark energies, you didn't realise how much it actually bogs your body down until it's lifted off you. Well, I got it done the three times, um, and once I had had it done the three times, so the first time, the week after that, I was like, my energy was, I was looking for things to clean in my house because I had, like, I was bursting my energy. I couldn't believe how much this had just gave me myself back after the first week. But obviously, we had spoke and we had said, like, once you get the three, that was like a total cleanse. Um, so I had agreed that that's what was going to happen. After the second one that I had had, um, I felt kind of ill for about two or three days after that. But a lot of what was going on was in my head. I felt like it shifted a lot. It's like it lifted me out of my head. Um, the rewiring in my head had started happening. That's what had started happening. I had started to release a lot of stuff that I was holding on to that I didn't even realise I was holding on to myself. Um, and the medicines just worked with me through the whole year. Um, I don't. I, I gave up a lot of bad habits that I'd had. Um, I mean, obviously I was not drinking quite a lot when I'd had my fibromyalgia and stuff like that, but I would still go out like every now and again if my pals were having something have a wee drink, I smoked cigarettes. Um, I was using weed at the time, especially with my fibro, I was probably overusing it at the time, trying to help my, trying to use something other than the, what, the pharmaceuticals. Um, but I stopped everything, I stopped smoking, I didn't drink, I just, the, the thought of even wanting to go out and do anything like that. How would you describe yourself now compared to how you were then, when you were ill? I wasn't nice to be in a book because I was so ill that I was either just crying and moaning about how horrible I felt inside. So I didn't want to be in a book people because I was already kind of awake, so I knew energy was transferable. I knew me being in a book people that was transferring onto them. So I didn't like to be in a book folk. I didn't like them to see me ill. Um, I was I was a strong person in my family that carried everybody else and being like that I didn't like anybody seeing me like that. Um, especially my kids. No, um, I'm glad I've done it because it's totally changed me as a person. The full energy in my house changed when I changed as a person. Um, I didn't even realise like even just going out and drinking at the weekends that that energy is still carried with you and how much you switch yourself off and that that energy was like the even the music that my kids listen to now is totally different to it's like that's changed the, everything in my house it's like once I've changed what had been happening inside of me and obviously it's helped clear up my, my fibro I've had any symptoms for um, seven eight months so how would how would you sum up the impact Campbell's had in your life it's totally changed my life. 
Absolutely, totally changed my life, I've totally changed as a person for the better. And obviously it's not well known in Scotland and some people are sceptical of these alternative method, uh, methods and medicines. What would you say to someone who was considering it for the first time? I would say go for it. I think a lot of us fear what's going on in our own heads and it's not actually that bad. Um, and a lot of what we're carrying about with us, it is not us. But we continue to carry it and we get scared to hand it over, to give it up because we're so used to carrying it about with us. When I, I would I highly recommend it. Um, any, anybody that's had or that's came to me and been like, I've got a friend that was diagnosed with arthritis and stuff and I'm like, the Campbell, go and get it done. A lot of people are scared of being sick though. So I would rather half an hour to 40 minutes of purging, bringing that out your body and have the rest of your life or continue carrying that about with you for the rest of your life. What's this thing called Campbell? What's it all about? Right. So, story goes back 2,000 years ago where there's people who are living on the forest floor in this place to be called Amazon Rainforest. And the story went was there was an illness came across the people of the tribe. And the illness became that bad that they thought we were going to lose everybody in the tribe. Right. I stayed really that to feel bad just now. There's an illness going about. They call that many different things. But after nothing happens, as we can see, then it's projected was that we might lose and our focus is to make lose the identity of who we are as a tribe, which is the Scots. Because they're trying all these things and nothing was working, so they go to what we call the medicine man. I mean, the word that they use is called Paje, and his name was called Campo. He was a medicine man, his name is called Campo. We translate it to, in the English, it's called Campbell. But he was the name of the medicine man, right? So he hears the plight of the people. So he knows, as like what I described earlier on, it starts on the spiritual side. So for him, as a medicine man, which we would call a shaman, so he knows how to go in. He goes in, which we now call this tea, which is called ayahuasca. Takes the tea and takes it into the forest to see if he can find the cure for the people. As it goes along, the story or the legend is told, it then meets greater God. So Campbell told him the plight of the people. He appeared with a frog in his hand. And he showed Campbell how to take the secretion from the frog, how to apply it to the people in the village, how it's applied to a female body, on the right leg, somewhere between the knee and the ankle. On a male body, he goes somewhere on the left arm between the elbow and the shoulder. So Campbell comes out the dream, out the vision. He tells the people of what he had seen. The people listen to what he said. What he was also told was that the cure for the people isn't in the material world, as he called the forest floor. He said, the cure is there. He said, all you had to do was look up. Because this wee frog lives at the top of the trees in the canopies, out the road, above everybody's head, and not in the river. They said that the frog in the morning sings the song to bring in the rain. Remember, it needs the rain. So as they learn the songs and the frogs come down, and then all the people become well. And then the story goes on that Campo, when his body died, they said his energy, then jumped into the frog to carry on his mission of looking after people who look after the forest floor. So there's a real intelligence with the medicine and, and like you say, you're stressing it works on an, an energetic level. Whatever it is, I mean, if you have been had before anxiety, depression, I mean, for as long as I had somebody come here who said to me that they'd suffered anxiety social anxiety for 28 years, right? I sat down in this chair, I put one dot on him, right? That's all I did. And he said, it just disappeared. I mean, one of the things I find with Campbell, which is also quite interesting, is that 
Campbell doesn't give you something. As I'm saying earlier on about the relationship with the doctor. Remember, anybody who comes, you're the healer. Remember, you want to go and come and heal yourself. I'm just in some of the tools that I use. So either I become the facilitator for you for the healing to take place. Rather than coming to fix something, I mean, no bother repair this. What it does was it wants to find out what's causing that. And if that's an energy, I mean, then what it can do was it can almost like extract that energy. See, that's part of the reason was it has a physical cleanse, the reason why it makes it easier in the body to drink some water. I mean, so you're really doing is drink some water, bring some water back out again. But for anybody who's had the experience, was well, like that energy that it like, comes out with. I mean, so it's almost like an energy cleanse. So it's been 11 days since you you done your first Campbell experience. Be interested to see how you've been feeling since that time. Yeah, well, as you said, 11 days ago, um, been and gone so quickly. Uh, so for me, what I'm kind of feeling is um, I feel a lot calmer since it. But what it has heightened is I'm now aware of there was stuff there to come out. There was all this hidden energy and negative feelings that obviously I hadn't let go. Uh, just through some of the, the past life experiences. Um, so f for me, that's what it's really, it's highlighted that no, there's, there's things I need to look at and address and work on. Um, so for me, yeah, that's been, I've been a major, a major thing uh, for me. How were the immediate days after it, Susan? How were um, you, you feeling? So after it, I was really, really emotional. Uh, the, the Sunday morning, I woke up and I just bawled my eyes out, um, which wasn't a bad thing. It was obviously that had to come out. So it was so, so good to get that relief from it. Uh, and then even the following night as well, it just was the same thing, just kept um, was thinking about things and was just letting it all out. Um, so it was so good to, for that side of it to get it out and to realise it's okay, like to cry. Would you do a Campbell again? Yes, firmly enough. Um, I was just there the other day um, and did another ceremony. So this one was completely different to, to, the, to the first one. Uh, obviously the first experience was um, 
discovering what, what was kind of really not wrong with me, but what, what, what was holding deep inside. Um, and so this next ceremony um, was really moving forward. It was getting out the, re the release, the relief I had um, was crazy. Just instantly you feel, obviously you go through the motions and you can feel it working, you can feel it working through your body and then it's just bang, bang. Um, mm. And then after it, you just, it's just, you feel lightened. Mm. Um, so you do. Um, and then again, it was just that, right, okay, feel really, really good. Let it digest. Obviously, it's still early days. It's only this is only Wednesday, so it was the Monday um, that I got it done. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, just still feeling quite calm, um, which is good. Uh, getting good sleeps, which is even better. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Amazing. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what to come out of it. Um, but as I said, what it has made me realise is there's stuff there that I need to work on, and that's a step in the right direction. Because if you're just ignoring it, you're not going to go anywhere. You're only you're only going to get worse. <laughs> so Karen, how did you feel in the days after taking the Campbell? I actually just felt um, like quite quite calm. I am a very, very anxious person and worry mind racing hundred miles an hour. But I just felt a bit I just felt really calm and quite just still and I felt as if I was more um, sort of focused and clear in my thinking. Um, so it, it, I, I loved it. I did. I really, really, I was shaking myself before it, but after I'd done it, I was like, I need to do this again. So you definitely want to do it again? 100%. No, no, there's no doubts in my mind. I would def. I feel as if that first one just was like the tip of the iceberg. It just kind of scratched the surface. And I just, I, that session made me realise that I was holding on to a lot of stuff. And I never got it out in that session, so I know I need to, I know I need to do it again. But having done it, it wasn't like anything that I've ever experienced before. It was, I just felt as if it was something that was natural and needed to happen. So I wasn't, all my anxiety, fear, everything just sort of disappeared through, like going through it. Um, and after that, I was just like, I need to do this again. I just think a new year, I'm going to do it again. I think I'll go in um, more able to sort of release. I think my mind was just full of, should I be feeling like this? Blah, blah, blah. Like, so I think the first session was almost like a taster and I sort of dipped my toe into it, whereas I think I would fully like immerse myself into like another session because I, I don't, you know, there's, you know what's coming, you know what's going to happen, you know the process. So I wouldn't, I would go into it with no fear and just immerse myself in it and just completely let go. I felt as if I was kind of, although I was doing it, I kind of felt as if I was holding on a lot. I didn't really want to let myself go 100%. So I was a wee bit more reserved, but I think the next time when I do it in January, I'll just let it go, like Elsa says in the song. <laughs> <laughs> so now you've come across this alternative healing practice, how optimistic you feeling? Oh, so optimistic. Like, I think... I mean, I, I was taking anti-anxiety an anti medication since I was 18, and I'm going to be 38, which is, what, 20 years? And I felt as if after that session, like, you know, things have happened since that s session, um, and normally the Karen before Campbell would have went to the doctor, got medication, all that kind of stuff, but like, I just feel as if I'm like, you know, I, you know, I, I, I've got this. Like, I, I can, I can do this. Do you know, I just feel a bit more cool, calm, collected, and I can just, I've just got more clarity in how I process things now. Um, so that one session has just had a massive impact and a massive change. So I'm just going to keep on going forward. I'm so excited. Well done. <laughs>